So I've been playing a lot of Pokemon and Pokemon fan games, and they've inspired me to work more on the unique animals of Zentrae. And of course, tying elements to animals is a bit cliche, so that's not what I plan to do. Overall, my goals for this video are to make around 10 new animals that feel unique and memorable, and things that you want to add to your home games. So please like and subscribe, it really helps a lot. Beasts of Burden play a major role in the lives of farmers and peasants as a whole, and that makes at a point where I should clearly add in animals for variety. So let's think about the Beast of Burden. What are some things that define them? Quadruped, or more if you're in the Underdark. Bovine usually, think bulls and oxen. Other traits that define Beast of Burden are usually intelligent and robust creatures with tame personalities. As such, I feel an excellent addition that can be made is a Gleamhorn Bovar. Its shoulder is at about six feet off the ground. It stands sturdy with soft, sleek fur, of earthen tones. It has horns atop its head similar to an ox, but with a closer build similar to a draft horse. These animals are native to the plains of Luminaris and are intelligent but stubborn creatures. Their heavy teal horns come to a fierce point that many herders put caps on to prevent gorings. A gleamhorn bovar moves at a fairly slow pace, but has extremely good endurance, making it ideal for farm work and cart work. Now while you can ride a gleamhorn bovar, if you want to get to a destination fast in Zentre, you'll likely want something a bit more agile, though this next creature will certainly cost you significantly more, given it is native to the wind-ravaged plains, an unhospitable location, that are southeast of the Divine Arch. Let me introduce you to the Sore Beast, a dog-like creature originally believed to be a creation of a wizard of the modern age. Though a text from the Divine Era, recently discovered found that they date back to the Divine Era, at the very least. These giant dogs look very similar to poodles, but they have a latent wind that blows around them, that aids them when they opt to run. When crossbred with regular dogs, they lose the latent wind that surrounds them, but they maintain the flawless white with shades of grey fur. The wind surrounding these sore beasts finds no combative use, and barely any practical use, but the boons these pups do find themselves with aren't entirely useless. They suffer no fall damage from any height when they are conscious, and they suffer no adverse effects from wind or rain. Now I hear you say, isn't this strictly breaking your one cliche you didn't want to break? And to that I have to say yes, but picture it. It's such a cute whimdy boy. The woods, the elven woods, are home to many odd fey beasts. But the one I'd like to talk about here is the Spineguard Stag. It's a majestic, elk-like creature that has bone-like platings projecting off of its spine. It stands taller than most creatures of the forest, or even in comparison to other equine creatures at around seven to eight feet, though it is lithe and agile. With large webbing interconnecting horns, it is defensive and territorial. These creatures are favored by elves that they share forests with for their agility in battle and their defensive nature. Many of them are do domesticated nowadays, the hooves of these creatures are powerful, and many of these creatures indent trees with their hooves in the wild, causing many creatures to avoid parts of the woods where these beasts have marked. Now you may be wondering, hey, evolution, why does it need to protect its spine? And that is because of the hunting tactics of the Fae Claw Prowlers. A Fae Claw Prowler will climb a tree due to its light body mass, and it will wait patiently for a prey to cross beneath its tree before it pounces down to quickly savage its prey. The spine guard stag's bone plating and large horns protect itself from these predators. The fey claw have, of course, adapted to these and opt not to attack them, instead aiming for regular elk and stag. With smaller prey being a good snack, you may question why I keep saying their tree. Well, it's due to the fact that a fey claw, after it has grown to adolescence, it leaves the tree of its parents, and sets out to find a tree for hunting from. As it catches its prey, it drags them up into the branches of the tree, where eventually a webbing of corpses fills out the tree. The trees that are suitable for these large cats have adopted the name corpse trees, as the thick foliage that produces a pungent scent covers the smell of the corpses that the fake laws drag into them. The Swamp of Deep, the home of the goblins, is filled with many insects and fungi, and one thing you may know if you have watched my videos or played in my D&D games, is that spiders just don't exist in Zentre. They're creepy in real life and overused in video games. But this entry isn't even about bugs. It's about a fungal bird. 
that is native to this swamp. It's a small puffin-like bird, very round body, with small, what should be vestigial wings. This creature has mycelial, round body, with a small beak. It has a odd digestive system, but it feeds on small insects. And though its wings are vestigial, its extremely light body weight allows it flight. The moist nature of the swamp is crucial to their survival, so you will almost never find them outside of this environment except as wizards' familiars. Now, my friends may know that my favorite creatures from video games are the ones that have entire ecosystems on their backs. Think Torterra, Mamorest, and that one turtle creature from Ark. So I'd like to add something like this to Zentray. But I feel many of the bases are covered. There's a tortoise, an elephant, and a turtle. What other creature has a large, flat back? Well, this doesn't exactly qualify with that, but let me describe to you the mossback ox. A colossal creature with a large, flat back that, in the wild, houses many flora from across the continent. These creatures travel in herds and roam across temperate climates. They frequently house many bird nests on their back, as their migratory nature lends to the nature of birds. The moss on the back of these creatures is rich in nutrients and helps the plants on its back grow, providing shade and nutrients for the mossback ox. To me, that fits. Next, I'd like to add a new bird species. So let me introduce you to the screamtail hawk. Its tail is shaped in a way that when it dives on its prey, a sharp whistling sound is made. This sound disorients and confuses most prey, but almost always before they can react, they are caught and killed by it. These birds have been used by falconers in Veridana, as well as in military practice, as clipping their tail in certain ways can create different but clear and unique sounds. It's used in bands and orchestras, as well as the military, like stated previously. Mages find use in the tail feathers of these creatures in sound-based spells for empowering them, making these creatures vital in some forms of combat magic. The next creature I'd like to share with you is perhaps my personal favorite. It is the adorable and ferocious Amig. It is a small, fluffy creature around the size of a squirrel. It digs to make its home and is extremely territorial. If you get within 10 to 15 feet of an Amig's burrow, it will aggressively bark and squeal at you until you leave. And if you get within five feet, it will begin ferociously attacking you, biting at your ankles and clawing at you until you leave or it dies. These creatures are frequently depicted as the embodiment of anger and are the subject of many idioms. You have a heart like an Amig is to describe someone as ferocious in nature, but to describe someone as an Amig would be to call them weak but passionate. They feature in many forms of Luminaris poetry, frequently as a way to insult someone, but in a more refined way. An Amig is certainly the most ferocious creature of its size, and it's more than capable of punching up. It's capable of fighting snakes, weasels, ferrets, even foxes. They make for good companions, if trusted, as they are watchful and protective despite their size. The next creature that I'd like to create is probably going to be the last, so let's see. Wizards need more familiars. They always do. So, I think I'll make a new fey familiar. The body of this creature is a glowing light, with five tendrils reaching out from it. It being relatively formless allows it minimal flight, allowing it to fly up to five feet away from any adjacent surface. It can use its tendrils to interact with objects, similar to an octopus. These creatures, though native to the Feywild, have migrated along with other creatures to the material plane, where elven wizards have made them a common sight. They also have a odd ability that allows them to leave some of the light that their body possesses on a surface for around a minute or so after they touch it with a tendril. They're intelligent creatures and frequently will go out and explore new cities that their master takes them to. They have an uncanny sense of direction and seem to always wander back to their master, no matter how far he ends up straying. Due to their fey nature, their lifespan is very long, at around 80 to 90 years. They make amazing, intelligent pets, and any wizard would likely find themselves honored to have one trust itself to them. If you have watched the end of the video, please consider subscribing. It really helps out. And let me know in the comments which of these creatures interested you the most. Thank you. Have a good one.